wow, uh, you were on a one-man mission. Uh, what inspired you to just go to the border? You know, it came out of nowhere, Dan. I was just a week ago last Saturday. I just woke up, like most people, having watched the news at 10 o'clock before I went to bed. And I just woke up crying and just this feeling of helplessness in terms of what can I do? And in desperation, I just went to Costco, right? And I bought, bought the things that I thought people would need, you know, uh, sanitary products. Uh, uh, I tried to buy some Calpol. Uh, that didn't quite work. But, but in the process... Um, I, I just encountered some real kindness from people in the queue when I was trying to buy lots of Calpol, and they just bought these bottles of Calpol for me. And I just, just the overwhelming feeling that if you give people a chance to help, they would. Anyway, for some reason, I just recorded a little thing about this in the car park, and this little video went viral. And as a result of that, I got approached by an organisation called uh, Help from Bournemouth to Ukraine, and they said, we've got lots of stuff here that needs to get to Ukraine, and we haven't got enough transport and i've got a vw camper van and i just thought you know what I, i've just got to do this and once that kind of need was presented to me i, I wasn't a celebrity dan i wasn't you know a guy for tally i was just a man with a van and i thought i'm just gonna load the van up and do what they need and so i went down to bournemouth and i picked up um well they, they've got lots and lots of stuff it's gone ballistic this this whole organization has only been set up for two weeks but they've got so many donations and they've got, you know, articulated lorries going down, but but they wanted, there was some very precious stuff, medical supplies, uh, defibrillators, um, baby heart fetal monitors, all this kind of stuff, very high value that I think they wanted to just entrust to a slightly smaller kind of van and me, and they did. So they loaded up my, my, my VW van with... God knows how much worth of, of medical supplies and, and cardio monitors and all sorts of things, and... I just thought, right, I'm just going to do this. I wasn't doing anything that like weekend, and so why not set off on a 1,260 mile road trip? And it was. And just when you I got there, about... Martin, uh, you were overwhelmed by the scale of the humanitarian crisis on the border. You know, when you see it for yourself, and you see things like this—this this pile of children's bags, which are there to be given to each of the the kids who arrive at this centre and, you know, they're given a, a little bag which they, they, that contains things for a little journey, their next journey, you know, like colouring book and a, and a little cuddly toy. And this is me actually on the actual physical border. And when you see just these, these families just queuing up to, to, to go to I don't know what, it's impossible not to be affected by it. And there's images in my head which, are, you know, it, I just... I, it, it's impossible to forget, you know, children like I've got this, this little girl who I gave a little bear to who, you know, she's like my daughter. Right. Um, and I've got a 14 year old son and I gave one of the boys there. It's a small thing because I just you just you just don't know what you can do. So I, I just gave him a football and it's a tiny little thing. But it's, there's all these this massive room. I think you saw me just in there with hundreds of people on camp beds. It's right there in front of you. It's not on the news. It's in front of your eyes. Right. And, you know. and Martin, some of the footage you shared uh, was really extraordinary. And I wanted to play one particularly poignant moment uh, when someone had brought a, a piano uh, to, to the border. So, so we'll have a look and then I'll get you to explain what was going on after. I have a piano here to welcome all refugees and to make like a little bit like a chilling, chill out atmosphere kind of music helps a little bit. Out. Can you play? Sure, I can play. Yeah. And wow, it's so powerful. Poland and the Ukraine, a place called Medica, where people are coming across, and you can see the you know the the, the, the ambulance lights flashing in the background there. Mm. People coming across the border, and the first thing he wanted them to hear was music which it just shows shivers down my spine. You're just showing that again. And it was, it's a small thing, but, but you, you just hope that it, it, 
I just don't know. These these people who they don't know what's going on. It, it's and just a moment. Of, how of, tempted of were, were you to cross the border, Martin? Because I know you really wanted to get into Ukraine, but you were strongly advised not to. So I wanted to make sure that this, especially this really expensive medical equipment I got, got to where it needed to do, uh, where it needed to go. And um, uh, for that reason, I was willing to drive into, into Lviv. Um, and I, I, was, I was told it was, it was pretty dangerous. The road there is very dangerous. I was then also told that, 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 that there is a, a, a noises that, that actually foreign aid convoys are being targeted because they're obviously helping, right? And there's me in a bright red VW van. I mean, I was thinking, yeah, I wasn't sure I had the right paperwork, but I still would have done it. Um, but then the, our contact in Lviv said, I will come and meet you on the, uh, the, the Poland-Ukraine border. So he actually came to meet me, and I actually transferred my stuff from my van um, uh, into his, and then he was driving straight directly to Lviv. And I'll just share something with you now, because he's just sent me an email saying, I just wanted you to know that your stuff has got through. And he sent me this picture. So this is a wow. picture of the stuff which I actually took. This is a heart monitor. Uh, and this is the, uh, the, 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 the thing that was in the, my window of my van. And these are two doctors in a, uh, a hospital in Lviv who've been given the heart rate monitor uh, that I actually Amazing. took over. So I know Good on you, Martin Roberts. You are a <laughs> true original. What an, what an inspirational story.